Cashflow Diary Podcast, Episode 65. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cashflow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cashflow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. All right, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I am your host, Jay Massey, and you have caught us right smack dab in the middle of one of our live events. So what we're going to do is we're going to get, if you missed the, the previous episode, just go and download it and get it and you'll understand more. Uh, but basically what we've been listening to is excerpts from one of the recent live events that I've done and learning all about raising private capital. For those of you joining us for the first time, you want to go over to learninvestingnow.com or if you've not gone over to learninvestingnow.com, now is the time to do so because there's an ebook over there that uh, focuses on raising private capital which is where some of this material comes from. The rest of this material is also found inside my book. Uh, if you want a copy of it, a digital copy, it's available, $9, $9.99. Uh, send a text message over to 949-682-3565. Inside, the keyword should be book, B-O-O-K. That's the only thing you need to put in the text is the keyword, and it is book, 949-682-3565. If you want, you can also upgrade the order, add a signed copy of the physical book available uh, and we will send that out to you as well now when i go out obviously uh, sometimes it's a one day two day type of thing uh, you're listening to part of what was a two-day excursion and obviously we can't play the entire 16 plus hours for you but for those of you who are part of our memberships you understand that you have access to it you get the privilege of seeing the whole thing if you want and learning all uh, that there is to know and be able to go through that information in detail so uh, just keep that in mind as you guys listen so if, if some of it doesn't make sense it's because it probably was in one of the other parts etc so at least now you have uh, a framework for understanding everything. Anyway, I don't want to keep you much longer. I want to go ahead and get you right into the next part. Here we go. All right. Have you met some interesting people so far? Yeah. Yeah. Have you met someone you didn't want to meet? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, here's the point. No matter what I pour into you, unless you find other people to do it with, you won't use it, okay? There's so many of you who already know all the right people, but you don't know what to do. And then there's others of you, you know exactly what to do, but you don't know the right people. Today, it's all in the same room. But unless you actually get outside of yourself, introverts, I'm talking to you, and you meet someone you don't know, on purpose, <laughs> it doesn't happen. Now, uh, fortunately, and you, you just learn to, to adapt and, and make it work for you and serve you. So, I'm going, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to start with, okay, that's working. This is working. Perfect. Uh, we're going to start with a technique that I use to find leads. This technique will work for you no matter where you go because it will also help you begin to frame and or shape the conversation with investors no matter what you're doing. I'm just catching the slides up to where we are in this whole thing. And it is imperative, in my opinion, that what we, what we got to do is we got to use everything we can to our advantage. Because unless you have an unlimited marketing budget and you can compete with people like T. Rowe Price, Charles Schwab, and any other mutual fund or big name guy, then you and I have to function differently. Does that make sense? And we've got to leverage what's being done so that we can also be successful as well. Because I can't afford an ad on the Super Bowl. Can you? No. <laughs> You're like, dude, that's a lot of money. For one ad, 30 seconds. 30 seconds of your attention is worth a lot of money. That's what it's, that, and I'm like, dude, I can't do that. 
So here's the, today's paper. I'm not from Sacramento. Sacramento B, April 12th, Saturday. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you something that you'll be able to use, and we'll probably reference it all throughout the day. But the whole point here is to help you understand where there is opportunity and how to have this conversation with your investors. As you see there on the board, or board, <laughs> the projector says entrepreneurs are simply those who understand that there is little difference between obstacle and opportunity and are able to turn both to their advantage. I love bad news. I love it. It's free. It's everywhere. Everybody wants to talk about it. And it makes it very, very easy because how many of you, you've got a friend, or maybe more than one, who you wish would stop telling you all their problems? <laughs> right? We love talking about our problems, whatever they may be. You and I have to become known as the problem solver. This lists a whole bunch of problems every day for free. Well, what is this? How much? A dollar. <laughs> or you just wait till, what is it, 11 o'clock and noon and 5 and 6, and it's right there on the TV, right? So this is how I take what I call a dip in the news, D-I-I-P. I'm going to continue the writing, D-I-I-P. Because you're going to use this information later when it comes down to helping your investor make the decision to invest with you. This is part of how you get the investor to go, yeah, I will give you a check. Because remember, it's character and competence. Part of the competence is understanding this process. Because the first thing is data. If I said to you, housing prices have increased the last quarter uh, 12%, what is that? It's just data. There's no context. There's no frame of reference. There's no, what are you going to do? What does that mean? What, what do I do? OK, 12%. Um, OK, it sounds good. Until we go the next step and I go, well, the nation average was 50%. You're like, oh, now it's like, doesn't sound so good. I'm not saying these are real numbers. I'm giving you an example of data to information to interpretation. The challenge is, is that most of us stop at data and go, I got it. No, you don't. And then those who, if you don't stop there, you definitely stop right here. You stop at information when you read the headline in the newspaper. So I'm going to scan the headline and show you exactly what I mean. Now, see, this is risky every time because I don't know what's in here. <laughs> but I do know what I need will be. So I'm just going to look at the headlines and see. Students saw panic and a ball of fire. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> OK, outlet stores to revive Elk Grove's ghost mall. Do you, do you, does, does that ring a bell with any of you? OK, so see, I didn't even have to go past the first page. But I've already found a real estate deal. Make sense? Because so, uh, but, it, but it's not the mall. Although, it could be. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> All I'm saying, you, but you see what happens? This is my challenge. When I, I start thinking, I'm like, well, we could do this and all this other stuff. All right, so you know where Elk Grove in this, this area is, yes? yes? OK. Now, is there anything else near there? Yes. yes, OK. So let me see. Let's look. The Elk Grove Promenade Shopping Mall was conceived during the boom a decade ago. Well, that's why it's a ghost. It has sat empty for more than five years as a humbling reminder of the economic collapse. It's empty. It's 100% vacant.
<laughs> Breathe. <laughs> I'm breathing. Yes. It, okay, so it. Oh, oh God. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Bring that up here, Jacob. Okay. Did you see what just happened to me right there? <laughs> I've just tried to like. You did. It's what? Oh my God. Ooh. Awesome. Breathe. This is what I meant. Once you're trained to recognize opportunity, you got to learn how to turn the sucker off. And this is what I'm doing right now. I'm like, no, I am not going to accidentally drive by. I will not do that. <laughs> uh, 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 right. I, do you hear where I'm coming from? OK. So all right, so I'm going to try to focus and read the rest of this article real quick. Now the unfinished retail complex is being reborn as an outlet mall. OK, remember I said yesterday about change of use. This is exactly what it sounds like is happening. Um, a symbol of cautious post registry blah, 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 blah. Shoppers, mall, discount. Howard Hughes Corporation will convert the former promenade site into the outlet collection at Elk Grove. The outlet collection. What I'm looking for, does that, does that make sense? Who's the outlet collection? Do you know that? Yeah. What do they have? Which ones? They're going to name the outlet. Whatever is in the outlet, all the different outlet malls that you've got around the country. Okay, okay. Well, hold on, hold on. This is why I'm, this is why I'm, see, this is where I'm going. I'm taking this data. Got it. Oh, God, look at the photo. It is vacant. Oh. <laughs> I'm not looking at that. Okay. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's so they're adding a restaurant and a 14th screen cinema to be a part of the mix. That's awesome. Okay. Oh. Just let it go. Okay, so the mayor is involved. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Okay, so hypothetically speaking, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm focused on what I am doing now. This is so hard. <laughs> okay, this is real. This has never happened. This is really hard to focus now. I've got to get my brain back. OK, all right, Howard Hughes Corporation. Let's assume that they didn't pay cash for this. They did get it out of bankruptcy court. But let's also assume that even getting it out of bankruptcy court, they didn't really have to put a whole lot down. Let's assume they made a promise to the mayor that, hey, we can fix this. Is that not too much far from the truth? And didn't they happen? to then prove their competency that, hey, Mr. Mayor, because we have the ability to fix this, you should give us these things. And we can make all this happen. And he, the mayor wasn't overly concerned about, well, how much you're going to pay. Now, the bank wasn't concerned about it either, because they just want the loan to perform, whatever that might be. And now what they're probably looking for is capital to, for the, the tenant improvement in some way, just to finish the complex enough to get it leased so that the tenants can come in and finish the inside. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, you knew about the mall. I just described to you how you could make that deal happen, and all you needed was the team around you. Because there is, is there one person at Howard Hughes that says, I can do it? Or does he say, we can do it? We. Yeah. And then when he sits down with the mayor and says, we can do it, does the mayor go, well, Show me your proof of funds? Or does the mayor go, well, show me who is we? Who is we? See, it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about the team that's around you. And when you look through the newspaper, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for death, destruction, and distress. You knew about this mall when it originally happened. That was the day to strike. Oh, it's sitting there five years ago? Oh. That was the day of the opportunity. This is announcing the opportunity. What's happening, it's a different opportunity. It's still an opportunity. 
just a different opportunity today. Because uh, I'm guessing, I'm looking at it, trying not to, but it looks like they've got room for what is known as out parcels on this place. So they're going to have an internal, it looks like an internal shopping mall with some out parcels as well. Some of those out parcels, I'm going to guess, haven't been uh, specced as to what they're going to do with that land and what it's going to be. There's nothing preventing you from approaching Howard Hughes and saying, hey, I know you're going to take care of this whole big thing, but give me this little piece. We're going to take care of this little piece, and then I'll go talk to Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, someone of that nature who likes to have those standalone restaurants and make that work. See, somebody's writing stuff down and getting ideas right now. Because that's, that's really what it is. And once you cast that vision and you start to figure out, does this fit that particular customer, you have the ability to go out there and make a deal happen. Deals don't fall in your lap. You don't just find them on the computer. You go make them happen. You scan a headline, and you take it from data to information. And what you are seeing and watching me do right now is interpret it. I'm interpreting the fact when I look at it and go, oh, there's an out parcel. Who doesn't know what I mean when I say out parcel, by the way? OK, I forgot. Hold on, let me back up. <clears throat> so here's the big plot of land, if you will, right, that the mall or building is sitting on. And for the sake of argument, let's say that that's the mall. But what over happens over here is you got this little piece, or you got a, well, maybe that's probably going to be a parking lot, but you might have a, a, another little piece back here and over here. And they just put a little standalone. Sometimes it's, I've seen gas stations. This is very true, like at Costco. They've got the Costco, and then they've got the gas station thing. Uh, you see little, little shopping center, little drive through restaurant real fast, what have you. This is what I'm talking about. Howard Hughes, you keep, please, make your billions over here. Can I have this little piece and make my millions and take care of that for you? Because that's also a problem for them. They don't like the wasted space. They're probably looking for someone to come in and triple net. Uh, uh, I just realized I said something. I'm like, dang it. It, it. They're probably looking for someone to take over this spot and take care of it. And it's on their list. It's on their to-do list. But since no one has approached them and said, hey, we'll do it, it's not in their 80-20. You know, they're following the 80-20 just like the rest of us. Inside of that 20% that's going to bring them the biggest bang for their buck is over here right now. This will eventually become a part of their 80-20 until, you know, if one of you go do it, it could be it's suddenly, oh, you'll take care of it? Cool. And now would be the time to strike for something like this. Is, does this make sense? Yes. Did you see how I did that from the newspaper? Every day. It's right there. And in this case, it was on the front page. And I ain't looking at it again. <laughs> because, because when I start illustrating that, I start putting together the pieces in my head of who I need to talk to to make that happen. And then I, find, then I end up finding, hey, would you like to go meet him? I was like, that was a very tough but conscious decision, <laughs> right? Because I was like, well, if I meet him, I know where this is going. I know what's going to happen. I know what the next steps are. And I was like, no, because I've got to stay focused um, on what it is that we're doing. And it's not because it's a bad deal. It's just good, it's not good for us at this moment. And you have to learn to make that decision. And I kid you not, that was very hard for me right there. <laughs> Notice how I'm not even looking at him anymore. <laughs> I can't do it because it's in the back of my head. But that's good. And that's what I'm talking about, but that's how you can find and recognize these opportunities. You have the ability to do that. Um, you've already learned about my journey. Talking about the SEC, many of you have heard this thing called crowdfunding, yes? You know what? Let me stop right there and remember. I am not your attorney. I'm not your financial planner. I'm not your CPA. I'm not any of those. I'm not trying to be. However, I will share with you things that I understand, how I understand them to work in methods, uh, tools, techniques, and strategies that I believe work and use in this marketplace. If you decide to go and do something based upon what I said, whose fault is it? 
Correct. That means not me, but you. <laughs> All right. I'm just making sure that we're very, very clear, but I still will share with you very, very directly on what we're talking about. So when it comes down to some of these rules, you've heard of crowdfunding. There's so many, it's such in flux right now. But in general, um, there was the Job Act that was Jobs Act that was passed. It's about the only thing that Obama has done that I like. <laughs> okay, and you can like me, hate me for that. It doesn't really bother me at all. The point is, it's the only thing he's done that I like, because it actually, I believe, helps the little guy. Finally, because for a long time, you've heard of. Um, have you? Okay, if I said the word to you, accredited investor, who does that make sense to? You know what I mean when I say that. Who does that not make sense to? You're like, what is that? Excellent, okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Make sure you learn, oh, go back a little bit about that. I'm going to run over to sec.gov, sec.gov. It is the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, website. On this website, they have a definition. Let me see if I can find it real fast. Accredited, yeah, look at that, accredited investor. Comes straight up. Oh, I've been here before. <laughs> On their website, in their search box, you can type in and find the technical definition of accredited investors, and they've got about eight little different bullet points. For most people, because you're not a bank, insurance company, registered investment company, employee benefit plan, charitable organization, director, officer, general partner, uh, biz, uh, et cetera, you're typically a natural person, that's what we're talking about, so number six and seven are the ones you're typically looking to and working with. So it's a natural person who has an individual net worth or joint net worth with the person's spouse that exceeds $1 million at the time of purchase, excluding the value of their primary residence of such person. In English, your net worth is a $1 million or more <coughs> with you or you and your spouse exclusive of your primary residence. The, when that exclusive of your primary residence changed, it, that's what hurt most Californians. Because there was a lot of Californians who were in that category, and then it was, oh, I can't count my house? Oh, crud. <laughs> you know, and it changed everything for them. Uh, and then, number seven, uh, a natural person with an income exceeding $200,000 in each of the two most recent years or a joint income with a spouse exceeding $300,000 for those years and a reasonable expectation of the same income level in the current year. In English, <laughs> if you're a single person, you've earned $200,000 in the last two years, and we, you expect, you have a reasonable reason to expect you'll do so again this year. If you're married, it's just $300,000. So if you're one of those two, it's one of those two, it's not both, you're considered a credited investor. Now you know. If you're not one of those two, your first goal is to become one of those two. <laughs> because before these changes, before crowdfunding, before all this stuff, there's the Securities and Exchange Act. There are three of them that if for those of you who are technical and like all the details and you want to look it all up, you're going to want to look up the one in 1913, 1933, and 1934. The rules have been this way since 1934 with the exception of the Jobs Act, okay? It's been this way for a very long time. This is why this is, it's not a, ooh, neat. This is why this is a big deal. It's not a, oh, okay, great, they passed something new. This is the entry point for most of us that we've been waiting for. In essence, and again, I'm really summarizing here. What it says is, says, between those three, if you are an accredited investor, there are some deals that we can offer you whatever you want. You as a person can create a deal and offer them nearly anything that you want to offer them. All rules are off. If it goes south, the only person responsible is the accredited investor, et cetera. They can't blame you, that type of thing and it makes it very, very easy to deal business with. Problem is, most of us don't know accredited investors. The opposite of that is, if you're not an accredited investor, you have to do, the, you, can only be, you can only be told about these types, these other types of investments, 
that are typically lower return and higher risk, period. And this is where we get Wall Street from. Most of our mutual funds are marketed to non-accredited investors under that guise, and you've not known about the other deals that are possible, not because the people who do them didn't want to tell you, didn't have a way to tell you. Does it make sense? Until they do the work known as classifying for what is a Regulation D exemption. That's the other document. If you really, really want to go to sleep, read it. Okay, Because then there are certain conditions under which you can deal with um, uh, non-accredited investors. And when you're dealing with Regulation D, you've got, I think it's 506 and 505. Yeah, 505, 506. You're qualifying for a Reg D 505 and 506 offering. And when you're doing that, there are certain guidelines under which you can now deal with non-accredited investors. The only reason I do this and know this is because that's what I chose to do. It was a conscious choice that I made because I was a financial planner, and I, in that industry, the people who need the help the most are usually the ones excluded from getting it. Why? Because the, when you pick up the phone and you want the help from the guy who really knows what he's doing, they say, do you have $100,000 or a quarter of a million dollars of net investable assets, you say no or not yet. They say, oh, well, let me get you over to this other department. And that's what happens. And I just wanted to be able to help those who said no to that question. Now, does that mean we, we spend a ton more in legal and accounting? Absolutely, because they make sure we pay for wanting to serve those who are non-accredited investors. You too will pay this same price <laughs> if you choose to do that. Or you'll choose to serve accredited investors only. And it doesn't really matter to me. I'm just letting you know this is the playing field. This is how it was. So when you're serving accredited investors, guess what you can do? You can advertise. You can make a billboard. You can tell people on TV if you want. You can do that. You're like, well, hold on, doesn't T. Rowe Price and Charles Schwab do, how, how, how do they get away with it? Well, they get away with it because they become what is known as a registered broker-dealer. A registered broker-dealer, which is the same thing if you've ever dealt with a, a real estate office. There's a broker and an agent. It's the same type of a relationship. The registered broker-dealer, though, has to go through a intense scrutiny and pay about half a million dollars. <laughs> on top of that, just to get the qualification to hire other people and call them licensed financial planners by the NASD and the SEC. That's just to get in the door. That doesn't even count operational costs and continuing education fees, et cetera. Now, how many of you have an extra $500 or $500,000 laying around just to get in the door? That doesn't mean you've spent any money on marketing. You haven't even developed your product or service yet. You've just got a piece of paper that says, OK, we can now do business. Like if your driver's license cost half a million dollars, we'd be walking. <laughs> hey, that's just what it is, which is what happened. So I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying this has been the hurdle you had to jump to be able to reach non-accredited investors. Okay. Until the Jobs Act, <laughs> and that's why I'm excited. It's been that way since 1933 and 34. How long is that? Long time. Long time. Too, long. Too long. The little guy, quote unquote, hasn't been able to play at the same level. The big guy's been able to advertise. We can't do that. Not, <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Now, I see many things. Because when I say advertise, there are many things that could be considered, <clears throat> and these are the two words that my attorneys tell me to always be careful of, is general solicitation. You see things, and I see them on Craigslist all the time. Send me money for 7% guaranteed return, first trustee. I'm like, how is that not a securities violation? I send it straight over to my attorney. He's like, yeah, it is, but, you know, I'm like, ugh, all right, can't do that. You post on Facebook. You know, I got a deal. I'm looking for investors, blah, blah, blah. Probably a general solicitation in most cases. 
and it becomes a challenge. And someone asked, how do you find the people with the money? If this is the case, if I can't advertise, if I can't go in the right, if I can't do all these things, how on earth do I get in front of them? You know what you can't advertise? You can advertise that you are holding a cash flow one-on-one game. Because who's going to show up to that? Probably people who are interested in cash flow or real estate and stock investing. Probably. And when they show up, if you do a really good job of educating them and showing them how this game works, might they want to sit down with you later and talk about going and doing that in real life? Yes or yes? yes. yes. Yeah. That's what happens. That's what I had to learn to do. But Jay, I'm introverted. Yeah, I understand. I didn't say it was easy. I just said that's what I learned to do because I had the same challenge. I wanted to get in front of people, and I didn't know how I could do it. And I had to figure out, well, what would they come to? Because in the financial planning world, it's typically let's hold a meeting at a hotel, have everybody dress up, get a whole bunch of wine and cheese and pamphlets and flyers and a whole bunch of stuff that no one's ever going to read or care about, sit down, talk to them, and hope that we can uh, corner them before they run out of the room uh, when the presentation is over to hopefully they, they can participate in our mutual fund. That's how that worked. Some of you have been to that. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. But those are very expensive to run and, and typically prohibitive for the small business owner. But what if you just had a cash flow board game at your house? Quite simple, huh? Different? Yeah. Effective, too. Because at the end of the day, you get to know the person very, very well. This is one of the ways I weed out individuals who I don't want to do business with. Mm -hmm. Some of you were playing cash flow with me yesterday, yes? yes. Was that fun? Yes. Let me also tell you what was happening. I was learning about you. I was learning how you respond emotionally to money. I was learning how you respond emotionally to positive and or negative stimulus. Because if, I, if you're an investor and I called you and I said, hey, guess what, we just lost the roof and you freak out, that's a problem for me. Not because we can't fix it, but because you just freak out and you make the problem worse. Make sense? Yeah. And I get to learn about you in that by watching you how, how you play the game, how you make decisions. Suddenly you're going, oh God, what did he see me do? <laughs> you're thinking that right now. Because how you do anything is how you do everything, even a game. And that's very, very key. So that's the other reason I love using it. Now, I also use it this way. Uh, anyone, a parent of a, a, a daughter or a teenage the daughter? OK, yeah. I love this. You want to teach it to your daughters and then tell them that you can date anybody you want so long as they come play cash flow first. <laughs> yes! It's such a filter. It's awesome. <laughs> because you get to learn and she gets to learn. She's like, ew, yes, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Makes me feel better. <laughs> I mean, there's just so much that happens. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. And watching, or, yeah, and watching people and how they play this game is cool. Plus, it helps you qualify for the Reg D exemptions of making sure you have prior existing relationships and all this other stuff. However, we're going to talk about all those changes in just a second. I saw a hand up, and I know the microphone is somewhere. I was just going to say, what about the sons? What about the sons? Yes, that's how I know, right? I got one now. I got to figure this one out. Uh, he's three. And he seems to attract little girls everywhere he goes. <laughs> like, geez. I, I, so I've got to figure out a new strategy. I really don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. Feel free. You got my phone number. Give me a call. <laughs> Help a brother out. Uh, I've got three daughters and one son. So I've been well-versed in Barbie. I know Barbie too well. Um, now I've got to learn G.I. Joe. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, this is different. You know, because he is so different. You think I'm high energy. Oh, my God. <laughs> he wears me out. I'm just like, you, you, just, you could sit still and just watch him. And just from doing this number, you will be tired. I'm telling you, he does not. I, I don't even understand it. I don't know where he gets it from. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, you get my point. The point is, 
is that the rules are about to change. So if the rules have been this way for 80 years, and it's about to change with that, do you think the marketplace is even ready to, that they even understand the change yet? <laughs> no. And that's kind of where we are right now. The SEC said these are the rules, but what we're still waiting on is what they call guidance. We, they haven't issued the guidance of this is what we mean in these rules. This is what we mean by what we say, meaning you should do stuff in this manner and this method. So it doesn't mean you can't do these things, but that's where you're seeing the likes of things like Kickstarter. You've seen that one? Realty Mogul. You've seen that one? Okay. Um, you're seeing these websites pop up because they are positioning themselves. They're positioning themselves to be in the space of being able to deal with non-accredited investors in this way for the perp because they're preparing for the Jobs Act. They're building their list today so that when the switch gets flipped, they are in a position to take advantage of it. Let me see. Uh, yeah, see right here? Right now it says to gain access to thousands of accredited investors. I promise you that's going to change. That little line, when it's time, will change on their website. Because, uh, and once it's available, it'll change. Now, see right now what they're accepting, so, and, and I love this. Because of this, what's happening is that you've got companies like mine, we're applying with these guys, uh, and they say, okay, tell us what you've done. <laughs> Which is, I'm like, cool, here's what I've done. And we get to put that online, and then if they like us or whatever, uh, we can put our deal there, and accredited investors find us, boom, give us money. Yay, fun. Except, what if you've not done anything? <laughs> You're like, I got a problem. And, and then you've got to play a different game. But this is my point. There's nothing preventing you or I from building a list in preparation of this. Does that make sense? See, I told a lot of you, take one, give one. And, I just, and I'm doing it right here with you, because I'm still active in this game. I'm not, I don't plan on ever not being. It's just fun. And I'm saying you do the same thing. You should be modeling any and everything that you see that I'm doing that looks like, hey, that probably works, <laughs> OK? Because these are the things that everyone else is doing. And you're playing this game to raise the capital. This is how they're playing it. And soon, soon, when we have the guidance, You'll be able to put that post on Facebook. You'll be able to say things like you, like you probably already are saying things, and, and, and be able to go out there and deal with accredited and unaccredited investors in the same way. Attract them to your deal. Send them to your real estate portal and say, hey, this is what we're doing. And literally send out an email so that you can raise millions of dollars to fund a deal, possibly a hotel in a foreign country. Anyway, but you get my point. And that's exactly what's happening. And I'm just preparing my company to be part of the same thing. I see your hand. I what website is this you on? That is realtymogul.com. Let me see if I can find some of the others. Uh, crowd. So I'm just going to type in crowdfunding real estate, real estate portal. Now, yeah. OK, so it looks like equitynet, fundable.com. Crowd tranche. So there's, uh, again, that's why you're seeing these everywhere. That's why it's in the news everywhere, because this is in a 100% game changer. It's a 100% game changer. Now, there are certain restrictions, for example, with crowdfunding, such that you can only, OK, if you're going to deal with unaccredited investors, you're now capped at the dollar amount. You can raise no more than a million dollars in one fund. You're like, what? A million, I need more than that. And some of you said, million, I, I can work with that. Either way, <laughs> right? But, okay, so you can raise no more than a million dollars. That's restriction number one. Restriction number two is you can typically take no more than 10% of a person's net worth in cash. So if that person has a million dollar net worth, you could still take no more than $100,000. That's the maximum you typically can take from any one person is $100,000, whichever is greater. It's $100,000 or 10% of their net worth. However, here's where it gets fun. You can take a minimum of amount of $2,000. Now we're talking. 
100 people, $2,000, done from an email list. Are you kidding? I'm in. That's what started getting my mind racing. The day that happened in July and I heard what it was, my team, my, they went, what is he on? <laughs> because they didn't have this perspective and understand that, guys, you don't understand. It's been like this for 80 years. It's never been done. The entire world, we can do this now. We can send out an email. We, we, we got to do something. We got to figure this email thing out. Help. Because <laughs> everything I've done has been in person. I know how to meet people. I've never built an email list before. How do you do that? That's new. I got to do what? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's play the game. Let's play the game. Because people will play with $2,000. They'll play with 10. They'll play with 50. Depending on what you're starting with, you'll play with a lot. But if I can't reach you, okay, if I can't reach you, it doesn't matter. And you can't reach me. The whole genesis of the Jobs Act, in this case, was to be able to create more jobs by making capital accessible to entrepreneurs. Well, aren't I a real estate entrepreneur? Aren't you a real estate entrepreneur? This is the whole thing. That's why I'm like, cool. All right, Obama, you got one. Right. <laughs> I'm happy about that one. You can take that health care back. That'd be great. <laughs> Not happy about that one. I'm going to start down here, and then we'll come up here. Will you share your email template for that scenario? Did you give me your card? I'll, I'll do that. You're going to receive the email template. <laughs> so worry not. It's on its way to you. In fact, some of you, uh, let me put it this way. I love to leverage technology. You probably, between the iPad, iPhone, and computer, you probably figured that out, right? So what I was doing while you were breaking is I'm literally, I have a system here where I, I've taken, so every one of you who have already given me your card, except this one, uh, Joanna, and oh, David, you'll be there soon. I was sitting here taking pictures of your card. I now have literally someone transcribe, oh look, they're getting ready. So these are the cards that are ready, so watch. This is, I'll hit that button, and then I'll do this, and I'm gonna type the word start. And I type the word start, and boom, and I hit, Save. Done. Yeah, it, well, it's, it works with Infusionsoft and a whole bunch of other stuff, but that simply begins the process. And everywhere I go, everything I do, I'm building that list so that when things are ready, it's like, cool, guys, if you want to participate in the deal, here we go. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's what you've got to be doing, too. The exact same thing. And if you make it click simple or that simple, it'll be very simple, easy for you to continually do that. And that's exactly what happened. So let me see. Larry, here it comes. Your turn. <laughs> it's, it's literally, I'm having fun with this, by the way. This is fun for me. Boom. Yes. Done. Next. I mean, and that's what's going to happen. I'm just going to click on my phone and get them all done and build the list. Because I don't know. I do know this. No list means no money. That I do know. I know that it, it may become uncomfortable for you to figure all those things out, but no skill. Remember, I said it was 20% skill. You got to get new skill. That's new for me. This computer thing, this photography thing, all this other stuff, it, it's all new skills. All of it. Because I've got to adapt with the marketplace just like you do. Where's the microphone? I saw, oh yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I had asked, oh, this, I'm Paul Adam, Sacramento. Okay. okay, I had asked about the 35 person um, thing yesterday, but that's not really my question. Um, you're talking about not being able to raise more than a million dollars in capital per fund. Yes. But you could potentially, since hey. you're not doing the, <laughs> since you're not doing the 35 person uh -huh. syndication thing, uh -huh. couldn't you potentially take an array of Mm. funds mm. under a corporate umbrella mm -hmm. and raise $100 mm -hmm. million dollars uh -huh. for a project that you could then apply? Yes. Okay. Participating in one form does not exclude you from the others. So could somebody potentially invest in multiple funds of course. across the board in your corporation? Absolutely. At 100000 each? Yes. And they get a percentage of each fund? Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about percentages and all that stuff soon, okay. but yes. The answer to your question is yes. You're, understand, you're beginning to understand the magnitude of why I can't sit. This is why I can't sleep. 
because it's like, oh my God, we got to catch up. Oh my God, we got to do this. Oh my God, oh my God. Because I, I know what will happen if we get a shot. I know what we can do with very little. Give me more, it's even better. I know what we've done with very little. And not having the ease of access in making this happen. And that's why I'm going through this now, so that you can lay the groundwork. But you still got to work with your SEC attorney. Just because crowdfunding exists, that doesn't mean the Reg D exemptions go away. You can still work. You can still create a fund, work with accredited investors only if you want. That, fine by me. You just got to work that fund according to those rules. That's all I'm saying. It's just now, instead of stopping at accredited investors, we have another way to work with unaccredited investors too which we've never had, just never had. Now, here's the flip side of that. You're going to run to a whole bunch of people who think they're ready to be an investor, and they're not, a ton. And you're going to have to get really good at accessing their character. And I'm going to suggest strongly you just play cash flow with them, because that'll tell you how they're going to respond if you ever have to give them a bad phone call. Everybody responds well so long as everything's fine. I don't care about that. Everything's fine, everything's fine. Tell me how you respond under stress. That's what I'm looking for. Because everything isn't always going to be fine. I can't control the next polar vortex. I can't do that. There's nothing I can do. That doesn't suddenly mean it was a bad deal and it was my fault. Does it? Unless you are emotionally unstable. And I need to know that. <laughs> Sooner rather than later. <laughs> And you've got to do, get good at figuring this thing out on their behalf sometimes. And I have talked people down all the time because it's like, ooh, you make me nervous. You just make me nervous. And if you make me nervous, that you're done. Because I don't know. We'll go here, then here, simply because it's easy to get it across the room that way. Does that make, is this helping you? Yeah. This is the boring part, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, Hi, Nathan. If you can just clarify, I'm, I'm kind of a yeah. little bit confused. So right now, can you market, uh, well, can you talk with people who you do know mm -hmm. who are not non-accredited investors and get them to invest with you uh -huh. in, a, in a syndicate? Got it. And, and can you do an email list if there are people that you know Got it. personally? Got it. Can you email now? Exit. Got it. And that the key words are people that you know and now. So. There are ways to qualify that as under a Reg D exemption. Yes, you've always been able to do that. But you have to already know them, typically in person. That thus limits your reach. Does that make sense? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. So because you now know them, different story. Okay? They're like, cool. The SEC, they'll say they'll, they'll let you mess over your friends all you want. <laughs> you know? But they're concerned about the general public. And that's what we're talking about. There's a limitation in reach. If I only had to, if I could only do and do business with my friends and family, I would not be standing here, <laughs> okay? None of them could put money together. And when I say money, I'm just saying, just trying to get to $10,000 would have been a challenge, let alone millions. Learning how to grow your network, expand it, in a one-on-one -on -one situation is what I had to do at the beginning. This new thing gives me a whole new toy that I've never had before. That I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be awesome to figure it out. Well, we are reaching the end of this particular episode. You're like, I want more. Well, here's the good news. There will be one more episode in this, re uh, in this, in this series. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. So you, you'll have one more shot at being able to hear more of this information uh, before we get back to our normal style of episodes, which also has great information. So if this is one of your first times joining us, congratulations. Again, one more time, you can go over to learninvestingnow.com to pick up the ebook to review some of the stuff that I just went over with you inside of this particular episode and the previous episodes. Or if you just want to grab a copy of uh, my book, Cashflow Diary, 10 Steps to Creating Wealth in Any Economy, you can do so by going over to cashflowdiary.com forward slash book cashflowdiary.com forward slash book or sending a text message with the keyword book b-o-o-k to 949-682-3565 and you know what guys i look forward to talking to you again soon until next time
Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.